I'm playing this guy who seems to always be putting things down that are Italian, I tie and I eat. The truth is, I never got one postcard or letter saying, how dare you make fun of Italians. <laughs> and I think that's because they knew that my character wasn't really doing it because of not liking Italians. He just wishes his son were trying to be one. And, uh, and driving me crazy with it, you know. And I keep saying to my wife, we're not Italian. Uh, anybody uh, from the audience want to ask any questions? We just want to tell you we love you and we love your movie. and I had to steal the focus from the four young actors who were playing the boys. <laughs> <laughs> but they gave me a lot to do, and the guy, of course, won an Oscar, Steve Tessich. Mm. And he himself had been in the little 500 race, which is a real thing. And it's sort of a, a stepchild of a, the big race, which is in the 500. Mm -hmm. The little 500 was like, a, for those who didn't get in the big 500, <laughs> but uh, Peter Yates is an English director, and uh, I was once once with him, and a number of journalists were talking, and they said, uh, <clears throat> "Was it your idea to have Paul Dooley do such and such?" And he said, "No, everything he did was his idea." <laughs> <laughs> but he was obviously a, a good enough director that give us a lot of latitude, you know. Uh, I didn't know that I was going to be doing the movie until the day before I, until the day before I left. And um, we did have some, they did have blocking rehearsals for the boys, because they had worked for two weeks rehearsing different scenes. And I wasn't in any of them. Wow. And by the time I got there, um, there was nothing to be done except scenes that I would be looking for if was in. And um, the studio was quite upset about this because it was right down to the wire, and they keep saying, hire the next person, the next guy that you liked at, 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 at the audition. What were you up to? What was your conflict? This I was in another something. movie. I was playing Richard Harris's son in another film, oh, and I couldn't get finished. off it. Um, my agent had lied, and... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 had lied, too, at the studio. So they got in, in cahoots with each other and were lying back and forth to, to make, make, make sure that I could do this movie. And I had no idea, because we never re I never read the script. They only gave us sides mm. at, our, at our auditions. Dennis and I had worked together once or maybe twice, and we knew each other quite well. So that works out really great. And I've always been a giant fan of Jackie O'Haley. I mean, mm -hmm. who hasn't? Yeah, he's just the best. And then there was Danny, so. By the way, I'm sure some of you are actors, but sides are something where you get, you're handed three pieces of paper, <laughs> four pieces of paper, the old days. <laughs> Onion skin, papers that melted in your hand. <laughs> and that was your audition material. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll tell you a, a quick story. Uh, I, I was doing a movie uh, <clears throat> with Robert Altman called Perfect Couple. And I was in almost every scene. This is the first movie I ever had the lead in. It was a, a kind of a rock and roll theme. And uh, during the last uh, week or so of that movie, uh, my agent kept saying, these other people want to see you for a new movie. Uh, I said, well, I'm in every scene. I don't think I can get there. And I really, frankly didn't care. I was kind of blowing it off. Said, Who is this mysterious movie? Anyway, it turned out to be breaking away. But uh, uh, finally I said, well, we're going to wrap the movie on Friday if they can see me Friday after, after we wrap. And I hear it's going to be a half a day, so maybe it's feasible. So I... Uh, they did give me three pages with words on them. I didn't memorize them because I think I'm going to be reading. It's a table read, as they call it. So when I get there, instead of you know a couple of producers and a director, just a handful of people, 
was the entire cast of the movie already cast. <laughs> and, uh, and maybe uh, 20 or 30 people we call suits from the network were sitting, sitting there to watch. So maybe with the cast and all, it was maybe 40 or 50 people. So instead of auditioning for three people, you're auditioning the whole movie and all of its lines. <laughs> at one time, so. Paul doesn't have any idea what it's about except what he learned in these two pages. Nor did we, reading the other parts, so everybody, it was a mess. <laughs> so we start, we, start, we start reading, and uh, because it was written so beautifully, you know, within the first five pages, I'm thinking, I'm gonna get this, how can they not use me? <laughs> I just had the handle on the character, he's very much like my father who was a little on the cranky side, he was not <laughs> ever funny, but uh, he was just the withdrawn kind of father. So in the parts where I'm withdrawn toward my son in the movie, uh, I get to use my dad for that. In fact, I've used him as a role model in parts uh, many, many, many times. But uh, to be able to audition with the whole movie, whatever, 60 pages or something, uh, what a great way to audition. So after, you know, you know, five, ten minutes, I said, well, if they don't use me, they're crazy. <laughs> when he finished it, the, the person who read the stage, I think the stage uh, directions are, he turns and looks at his son, because it's that old chow papa. Yeah. And, um, uh, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> something, something like a compliment for me. <laughs> 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 I'm reading the last line of the movie, and everybody just stopped and looked at Paul because there was no question. And they didn't have their father until that late in yeah. the casting process. So it's not that they were desperate, but they were uh, highly motivated. <laughs> and he was absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. And we all And uh, I had a similar relationship with my father, only I think it was more estranged. So the, the father and son stuff really resonated very deeply with me and, and with Paul. We had great respect for those scenes that we did and took great care with them. And I mean, we thought it was a sports movie, but there was so much <laughs> emotion involved in the movie. And um, well, I'm glad they picked me. I thought it was a joke movie. <laughs> well, when they said, when, they, when I didn't know how to take it when they said I started speaking Italian to my friends, I thought, who the hell is that? <laughs> Why didn't they beat this guy up? <laughs> He's really hanging out with everybody at the quarry. I don't think so. <laughs> but, I'll tell you a great little piece of trivia. Uh, the quarry looks pristine. Oh, wow. <laughs> But Patricia von Brandenstein, there's a mouthful, was the art director. She had to go in there where it was all graffitied up at eye level, where people went out in rowboats and put graffiti on the stones. And she had to make it look uh, like the virginal, just a great place that hadn't ever been you know, screwed up. And uh, that took quite a while. They went out there in rowboats and covered up the graffiti. Uh, and by the way, the quarry is called the Empire Quarry. And from it, the Stones built the Empire State Building. Oh, wow. Go no. It's like upstate New York didn't have rocks. <laughs> How much bike riding had you done before this movie? Like, what was your experience? Um, not much. Really not much. Um, not much at all. They brought this bike in at one point. I was doing this movie where I was playing Richard Harris's son, and there was some trouble on the set with Richard being a little bit temperamental. Uh, I thought he was great, but he was a little bit temperamental. And so we kept having delays, so they started bringing bicycle equipment to where I was working, and they brought those rollers that you're supposed to get up on the bike to do that. And I could never ever master that, and they were really disappointed in that. And I said, "Well, just have somebody hold the damn thing out of frame. I mean, it's really easy to do." 
and that's what they did. <laughs> but that uh, gaffer, he, he, has, he was so strong to be able to hold it so steady and make it look like we were on rollers, but we weren't on rollers. Yeah, I was on pot myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we've come to an end of this introduction. <laughs> Take my mic, please. <laughs>